Okay, in this lesson, uh, we're going to continue investigating z-scores and how that applies to different uh, word problems or different uh, scenarios in life. Uh, in this particular question, here's how it reads. It says, the ABC company produces bungee cords. The lengths of the bungee cords produced have an average or a mean of 45.2 centimeters and a standard deviation of 1.3 centimeters. Bungee cords that are shorter than 42 centimeters or longer than 48 centimeters are rejected by quality control workers. And question A says, what percent of all bungee cords are accepted? So what I've done at this moment is drawn a normal distribution curve, and I put the mean for the lengths of bungee cords in the middle, which is 45.2, and I've gone up by standard deviations of 1.3 uh, in both directions. Now, uh, what I'm going to first of all do is estimate what I kind of think the answer is going to be. But the question states that bungee cords that are shorter than 42 centimeters, so 42 centimeters would roughly be here, And also bungee cords that are longer than 48 centimeters, which is roughly here, uh, are rejected. So all of the lengths of bungee cords between those two lengths are accepted. So if I was to kind of look at this and uh, <clears throat> estimate, this entire area I know is 234s and 213.5s. So that would be roughly 95%. Uh, I would estimate this side here, this little bit here, to be maybe like 0.3%-ish or so. And also this section here, which is a little bit bigger, according to what I've drawn, uh, to be, again, roughly <clears throat> maybe 1%. So if I was estimating, I would say that they are going to accept 1% plus 95% plus 0.3%. I'm going to guess about 96.3%. <clears throat> That's my estimate, okay? Now what we're gonna do is look at how we can actually calculate that. What you're gonna need, <clears throat> as you've had to need in previous uh, lessons, is a z-score table. Uh, you can, you might have one from me, or you might not. Uh, you can also go to Google, and you might wanna pause this video at any point in time. Go to Google, Google z-score tables, and you will find z-score tables. Um, <clears throat> so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, first of all, let's go ahead and find out the z-scores of each of these data values. So maybe if I use different colors, I'll use uh, red for 48 centimeters. So if I can find out the z-scores, so z-scores we know have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. <clears throat> so as you can see here, the z-score for 42 is negative 2 point something, <clears throat> but we can go ahead and find out what it is. Uh, we know that the z-score formula says this, that the z-score is always the data value, so this would be 42, minus the mean, which is 45.2, all over the standard deviation, which is 1.3. So the z-score here would be negative 3.2 divided by 1.3. And we know, <clears throat> or we can calculate, that that is roughly, you might want to pause things as you go here, I go quite quickly, uh, is negative 2.46. So there's the z-score. That will be useful in a little bit. Uh, as far as... So this z-score here is negative 2.46. As far as the z-score for 48, let's do the same thing. The z-score would be 48 minus the mean, which is 45.2, all over the standard deviation. So if I was to simplify this, it's roughly 2.8 divided by 1.3. And as you can see, that's roughly 2.15. So this z-score here is roughly 2.15. So the idea here would be this. If I could find out the percent below 48 centimeters, as well as the percent below 42 centimeters, if I subtracted those two, I'd get the area in between. So what we're going to do is find out the percent related to each of these z-scores. And that'll be the percent below. So this would be the percent and the percent. So let's, let's look for, in our z-score table, negative 2.46 and find out the percent. So here we go. Negative 2.46. Here is negative 2.4. Here's 0 0.06. And that looks like it would be 0 0.0069, or in other words, 0.69%. <clears throat> so it's 0.69%. Uh, the, let's go, so that means that 
uh, are below 42 centimeters. Let's go ahead and find out the uh, percent below 2.15 as a z-score. So 2.15 is a positive z-score, and that's going to be roughly, here's 2.1, here's 0 0.05, and if we find out where those meet, that is at 98.42%. <clears throat> so if 98.42% of bungee cords are less than 48 centimeters and 0.69% are less than 42 centimeters, between those is the difference between those percents. Uh, so if I just subtract those, it would be 98.42 minus 0 0.69, and that's going to get you a total percentage of 97.73%. So they're throwing out roughly, or they're keeping 97.73%. That's our answer to A. My estimate was 96.3, and my <clears throat> actual calculated value is 97.73. So you can find that out, and, you, and they could do some quality control related to that if that was unacceptable. Uh, here's question B. If 20,000 bungee cords are manufactured each day, how many bungee cords would you expect the quality control workers to reject? So um, if 97.73% are kept, my thinking would be that if I do 100 minus that, That would be a total of 2.27% are rejected. So we know that roughly 2 out of every 100 bungee cords are rejected, or more specifically, 2.27 out of every 100. Uh, so if we would like to calculate how many they're throwing out at 20,000, what we're trying to calculate is, so the question is getting at this, what is 2.27% out of 20,000 bungee cords? Okay. Again, you can pause this at any point in time that you'd like to. Maybe try that on your own. Uh, I'm going to start calculating it right now. So it's a percent into a decimal. That would be 0 0.0227. And we're going to multiply that by 20,000 bungee cords. And that gets us approximately, I can show you on the calculator, although I've already done it. <clears throat> and that would be 454 would be rejected which may or may not be acceptable to that particular company. And if it wasn't, they may want to do some quality control to see if they can be more close to the mean.